What's up everyone? Am I late to the GTX 1060 party or what? So you're telling me I can get GTX 980 performance for $250? All right, who's invited? Cause I'm in. With the impending worldwide release on July 19th, this card is shaping up to be an incredible and possibly the best performance per dollar on the GPU market, getting you into 1440p gaming and demolishing 1080p gaming at ultra settings. So it's only fair that I give you my best $1,060 gaming PC build guide, which includes a badass monitor and of course the soon to be released GTX 1060 from Nvidia from their Pascal lineup. So a quick rundown of the 1060 before jumping right into the build. So taking Nvidia at their word and also verifying with leaked benchmarks, this card is looking to deliver a huge punch for $250 to $300. So if you were hesitant on pulling the trigger on the RX 480, the GeForce experience for a little more coin is looking very tempting if you can wait it out a little bit longer. Using a new Pascal chip, the GP106, rocking 1,280 shaders with an out-of-the-box boost clock of 1.7 gigahertz, having a 192-bit interface with eight gigabits per second modules and six gigabytes of video buffer. With these specifications, it doesn't look like it's going to be an over-promised, under-delivered case. Having little to no concerns at all with lack of VRAM or lack of bandwidth. And depending on how well this card overclocks, potentially sustaining boost over 2 gigahertz, considering that smaller processors usually overclock quite well. So add in board partner variants of the 1060 could reign supreme in popularity for the fourth quarter of 2016 and throughout 2017, really hitting that sweet spot of performance and borderlining on a mainstream pricing structure. The only caveat being that there will be no SLI support on this beast. Seems like Nvidia doesn't want to play the multi-GPU setup game with AMD around the sub $300 prices and or doesn't want to take away market share from their higher end offerings. So while on the topic of performance, here's my expected frames per second out of this gaming PC build. So assuming it lives up to the GTX 980 performance, so you know what kind of epic gaming you'll be getting yourself into in Star Wars Battlefront Ultra FXAA 1440p 59 frames per second. Rise of the Tomb Raider very high FXAA 1440p 66 frames per second. The Division on Ultra at 1440p 45 frames per second. Doom Nightmare Settings 1440p 75 frames per second. And The Witcher 3 Max Settings Hellworks On SSAO at 1440p 47 frames per second. And if you wanted to dial it back to 1080p, a card of this caliber could really utilize the rapid refresh rate of a 144Hz display. It'd be up to you for your preference, really. So, now that we are all acquainted with the center point and theme of the gaming PC, let's dive right into the build with the rationale, most efficient fun allocation, and features behind the seven essential components that comprise this amazing PC build. And I'll leave links and deals in the description box down below for all the parts and order of appearance for pricing and further information for those of you that are interested. Up first, for the central processing unit, CPUs run game logic, prepares instructions, responsible for preparation of all your commands to your GPU for creating the gaming scene. Its importance is very high. We are going with a Skylake i5 for just $200, the i5-6500 clocked at 3.2 gigahertz. I should note that the highly underrated Skylake i3 would surprise you in a lot of games heavily weighted towards GPU and not excessively demanding on your CPU. The difference isn't significant in games like Far Cry Primal, Rainbow Six Siege, Rise of the Tomb Raider, but it's still safer to opt for the quad-core goodness from Intel since performance increases are brought to the forefront in games like GTA V, Dying Light, Project Cards, Crisis 3, Rise, and many other CPU intensive AAA titles. I think you'll thank yourself later for spending that extra $80 to go with a Skylake i5. And as far as opting for a Skylake i7, there's significant diminishing marginal returns per dollar per FPS. Jeez, that was a mouthful. There's less in-game stutter in specific titles and in specific scenes that an FPS bar chart might not adequately represent. Nonetheless, for an extra $100 to $150 over the i5, it's not really in that sweet spot anymore since frames per second difference is marginal, especially if you plan to overclock your i5 to a similar frequency as that of the i7-6700K. And not that the i7-6700K doesn't have its place considering its hyper-threading benefits outside of gaming, including rendering, encoding, compression, and arithmetic performance. So I'll be sure to leave a link in the description box down below to overclocking.guide if you wanted to download older BIOS for your Z170 motherboard to overclock the non-K series processor I'm recommending. It's unofficial and not as flexible since the multiplier will be locked 
clocked at 32 with the i5 6500, only being able to change the base and voltage and temperature measurements don't work. Nonetheless, that option is available to you for that little extra bit of performance. The too long didn't read for the CPU if I over expounded is go with the Skylake i5, you won't tell much of a difference when gaming to an i7, and the i3 could potentially present limitations in CPU intensive scenes and games. Up next, for the motherboard, for just $106 right now, the MSI Z170A SLI ATX LGA 1151, a really premium and sleek looking board that gives you a lot more than you'd expect for $100. Firstly, being Z170 supporting overclocking and much higher than 2133 MHz RAM at up to 64 GB of 3600 MHz RAM. I'll get to the RAM selection in a second, but faster RAM is ideal for mitigating memory bandwidth as a limiting factor while gaming. So having support for over 3000 on your motherboard is ideal. This motherboard also has has Turbo M.2 for adding an extra fast SSD. Also has a Turbo U2 connector, USB 3.1 Gen 2 port, four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and it does have two-way SLI support that we won't be using with the GPU selection. That all said, it has a very safe color selection with an all black and silver aesthetic. So it's really an excellent choice for just over $100. For random access memory, we went with the G-Skill 8GB to 4GB sticks of Ripjaws 5 Series DDR4 3200 MHz RAM for just $55. There's no need to go for 16GB in almost every game. Although RAM is getting so affordable these days, why not if you have a little extra to throw at your PC? In lots of games like Witcher 3, Far Cry 4, GTA 5, you'll see a noticeable FPS improvement. Opting for a faster kit of RAM, especially with a GPU like the 1060 or the 1070, where hitting these cards limit with your hardware is becoming more and more challenging. This kit of RAM also looks pretty sick, matching the motherboard with a black color scheme. For storage, I went ahead and went with an SSD in this build. This is where a lot of personal preference comes into play since you can go with a better dollar per storage capacity in a mechanical hard drive and not take a hit to your gaming performance. Just load, wait, and boot times will take a hit. Nonetheless, if you are spending $800 to $1200 on your gaming PC, why not have a premium, very snappy, responsive storage device with ultra low failure rates having no moving parts in that of an SSD. So I went with the PNY 480GB solid state drive for just $110. That's a darn nice deal and it's not a shabby solid state drive by any stretch of the imagination having sequential read and write speeds that deliver as advertised and are on par with what you find out of the popular Samsung Evo line of solid state drives. Except you'll find significant price savings by opting for the PNY. 480GB is great to start you off you can add plenty more down the road as needed or throw in an existing mechanical drive you may already own to get the true mass storage capacity. Okay, up next for the graphics card, the star of today's show, we have the incredible NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 with an MSRP of $249. And that's just the market suggested retail price for base add-in board partner cards. If the GTX 1070 and 1080s launch are any indication of what pricing and availability will be like, they sell out fast at launch and it could take a month or two for pricing to stabilize near the suggested retail price. So if you're having trouble finding them soon after the launch date of July 19th, the GTX 1070s are starting to go for much closer to suggested retail pricing. And of course, there's always the Team Red alternative for a little less money and pretty stellar performance in those add-in board partner cards that also offer that crossfire support and performance boost in DirectX 12 games. So it really is exciting times for building a gaming PC with so many great choices to pick from. I would shy away from the reference model, i.e. the Founders Edition 1060, since they are overpriced and I'd rather hold out on one with better cooling, phase power design, overclockability, and a custom card from either MSI, ASUS, EVGA, or Gigabyte. And I'll leave links down below so you can check up on their pricing and availability and my top choices. So without getting too sidetracked, GTX 980 performance for under $300? What's not to love? Up next, for one of my favorite parts of the build where you really have a lot of options in design, shape, size, colors, and aesthetics, I am going with a case, one from Thermaltake, that has really caught my eye. The translucent Versa N21 Snow Edition Mid Tower case for just $60. So this case really offers a lot and is quite friendly on your wallet while doing so. Having heightened foot stands for airflow enhancement, front hidden I.O. ports with one USB 3.0 and two 2.0 ports in the front, microphone headset jacks that keep a stylish design going. Also, it has a tool-free design with tool-free bays for your SSDs and hard drive, and an included 120 millimeter silent vent 
for that rear exhaust. It also has a three year warranty. And this case looks incredible if you put some LEDs inside. It has a nice side window. My only complaint is that I do wish it had a slightly larger side window to really show off all the incredible hardware in your PC build. Although at $60, it's still an awesome choice. And last, but not in the slightest at least of importance, we have the power supply. I went with one from EVGA, EVGA's G2 series, the 550 watt Supernova Gold certified power supply for $75. It has an eco control fan system with absolutely no fan noise under low to medium loads. And you probably have heard of the reliability and customer support from EVGA having a seven year warranty and high quality Japanese capacitors. This is an excellent choice for some clean 90% or greater efficiency power to your epic gaming PC build. And we have a bonus in today's build. I wanted to include a monitor. And if I could also direct you to my top five monitor guide link down below to give you some more options to go with your setup. Two monitor choices for this one. For my 1440p pick for just $260, we have the Acer G257HU 25 inch 1440p IPS display for those vibrant colors and viewing angles. A 4MS response time, so no noticeable ghosting. So it really has the best of both worlds with a beautiful IPS display at a low MS. And it's practically bezel-less if you wanted to add another matching display to have two or three by side. Only caveat is it's not best amount compatible, but that's likely a non-issue for most. And for my 1080p 144 hertz pick display, given that the GTX 1060 pairs quite well in this refresh rate and resolution realm as well. I'm going with the Acer GN246HL 24 inch gaming display. It's a TN panel, so you miss out on the extra vibrancy of your typical IPS display. But at 144 hertz, it's a perfect choice for first person shooter games and fast twitch based MOBAs. And it has that ultra low response time of one MS and is best amount compatible, slim, sleek, what's not to like at $190. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching my $1,060 gaming PC build with the GTX 1060. I really hope you enjoyed it and hopefully it helps someone out in their quest of building an epic gaming PC. So be sure to check out my GTX 1080 gaming PC build video as well as my GTX 1070 gaming PC build if you found value in this video. And be sure to leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the build whether you loved it, hated it, improvements, suggestions, or feel free to share any personal anecdotes, experience, and or insights with any of the component selection within this video for others to see and learn. And as always, be sure to drop this video a like if you liked it, dislike if you hated it. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, well then get subscribed. This is John from Tech. I can't wait to catch you guys in the next video.